So Polis, you presented this very interesting trial on periprocedural management <clears throat> of anticoagulation and ablation procedures uh, with the Pixaban. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the trial and the results? Yeah, um, for, first of all I'd like to say it was a privilege to be here at ERA yeah. 2018 and it's a wonderful congress. Um, I presented this on behalf of a large group of people. It's probably one of the largest investigator initiated trials done in the field ever. We randomized um, 674 patients undergoing AF fibrillation, all at risk of stroke, yeah. to either a Pixaban or vitamin K antagonist, continuous anticoagulation as recommended in the ESC guidelines. And we assessed them, compared it for a primary outcome of uh, stroke, cardiovascular death, or um, major bleeding defined by the BARC bleeding consortium, which is a reasonably wide bleeding definition. And we found absolute no difference in that primary outcome. And we could even say in a formal non-inferiority mm. analysis that um, a Pixaban was non-inferior to vitamin K antagonists yeah. in that trial. Um, we found two strokes, both in patients with persistent AF, both in patients undergoing a TOE. Yeah. Um, so sort of everything was done according to plan. And I think we have to accept that there is a small risk of stroke in patients undergoing AF ablation. Neither our trial nor any of the published trials are yeah. only vaguely powered to detect differences in stroke risk. So I yeah. think we have to accept that these are numerical descriptors and if you add them up you find that the stroke rate is low, very low and comparable. Um, these one, two strokes were in the, in, they were in the, in the Apixaban? Both arm. strokes were in the Apixaban arm and yeah. we had one death in each arm. Okay. Um, uh, we also had seven tamponades, yeah. two in the uh, Apixaban arm, five in the vitamin K antagonist arm. None of them was managed with reversal agents outside okay. of vitamin K, which okay. in a way, if you wish, is a re reversal agent for vitamin K antagonists. Yeah. Interestingly, the majority of the tamponades were even managed without stopping the anticoagulant. Okay, wow. Uh, so they were ma managed by pericardiosynthesis. I have to admit, I recall a very um, sad case many years ago. This was yeah. before we had DOAX, who underwent AF fibrillation, had a tamponade. Um, we did a pericardiosynthesis, we stopped the warfarin, yeah. re reversed it, and she had a big stroke two days later. Yeah. I think I've that those patients in, in that yeah. um, acute illness are actually probably at increased risk of stroke. So yes. I think this is a very reassuring message that continuous anticoagulation with I'd say any of the NOACs, although we don't have um, a trial with Adoxaban yet, there is one ongoing, no, no. Um, but it all points in the same direction, it's safe. When you look at the point numbers, you also find that even though we had a population that was at high risk of stroke yeah. and therefore also at high risk of bleeding, yeah. we had very low numbers of bleeding events. Overall, yeah, it's Overall. very impressive. So yeah. Yeah. I think we can say AF ablation, as we do it currently, yeah. is safe. There are a few other interesting things. One is that our time and therapeutic range in the vitamin K antagonist arm was exceptional. It was 84% yeah. in the median. Excellent. Um, that's yeah. uh, and often that, clinically and reported uh, rates are much lower than yeah. that, aren't they? Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that is something that, that, that is worth, and that shows the quality of the investigators to me, yeah, uh, I know, yeah. of the sites. Yeah. And, and yeah. where were the sites? Uh, so they were, oh yeah, they were in seven European countries and, right. and in the US. So okay. it is an intercontinental trial. Yeah. My co-PI, Luigi Dibiase, was the lead for the US. Yeah. Um, and as you know, he has been involved in quite a few yeah, trials no, in anticoagulation yeah. and AF ablation. Yeah. He was actually uh, the lead investigator for the uh, COMPARE trial that resulted in us now using uninterrupted anticoagulation. Anti yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, we had 49 centers. The paper has been published in the European Heart Journal today and Excellent. there is a full list of all sites and site PIs um, in the paper appendix. Yeah. And I guess what's different about this trial is I guess with warfarin there's always been a reversal agent. Yeah. With the bigger trend where we've got uh, mm. published mm -hmm. data as well there is a specific mm -hmm. reversal agent but I guess with the Pixaban we don't have anything specific well, yet do we? But it still seems to be okay to you. To be fair if we say we have a re reversal agent for warfarin if you look at the time to hemostasis in yep. patients given uh, even plasma factors and yep. vitamin K and everything that's longer than the time to hemostasis in a patient on a NOAC where you stop the NOAC. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Because of the short half-life, yep. um, I think our study shows that at least in AF ablation patients there is not that much need for a reversal agent that will be different in acute trauma where every, yeah. every half hour counts. Yep. Um, but uh, I think it's very reassuring in many respects. The other reassuring aspect is our MRI substudy. Yeah. So we did a very specific high resolution diffusion weight imaging MRI. Yeah. I'm not a 
great MRI expert myself, but sure. it is amongst the most sensitive sequences that you can use and yep. it can distinguish between acute lesions and chronic lesions. Yes. Um, and we found lesions at the expected rate, 25%. Okay. I think that's important for all yep. of us to remember. There is a, a decent risk of silent small acute Sub, brain yeah, lesions. These are subclinical. They, they are yeah, all yeah, subclinical. Yeah, yeah. They all underwent a formal yeah, neurological yeah. exam before the MRI and they yeah. didn't have for formal neurological changes. Um, but they are there and I think as a community we need more research into reducing that. Yeah, absolutely. But on the reassuring side there were absolutely the same number of lesions in either arm. Both okay. the number of patients with lesions, the number of lesions per patient and we will do further analyses finding out what are the factors that drive silent MRI lesions yes. in AF ablation? Because there was some then, concern even with the discussants that there were, it take, you, you need more heparin in patients who are on, on a DOAC potentially. Whether it's the heparin and the ACT, whether, yeah. it's, whether it's air, whether it's yeah. debris going off yeah, from yeah, the wounds, yeah, yeah. I think there are so many things that we, but we need to understand why they occur before we can improve no, uh, how we prevent them. Absolutely. But I think that is really something that we need to do as a community now. And we need to start, um, first of all, accepting that they are there. Yeah. Yeah? And they are only there when you look for them. Yeah. Uh, actually, when you look through the literature, you find brain MRI studies that are reported that report much lower brain MRI lesions. Yeah. But they just have uh, different sequences. It's like comparing um, rhythm outcomes with a 24-hour holter to rhythm outcomes with a continuous monitor. Yeah, of sure. course you find more when you do the continuous yeah, the monitor. More you look, the more you find. Yeah, the more you look and this is yeah. a very sensitive technique yeah. um, but I think it is a clear call to action. We need yeah. to understand why these lesions occur and then need to think about how we can reduce them. Fortunately though cognitive function actually improved at the end of the trial. Excellent. Okay. Which is also a good sign, I think. Uh, yeah. It was only in one test and only by a small uh, amount, but cognitive function improved, yeah. which I think, again, is Benefits reassuring. Sinus rhythm, yeah. maybe? Maybe it's the better perfusion. Uh, that's yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, we yeah, as yeah. cardiologists would hope. think, yeah. uh, <laughs> hope and think. Uh, but I think that, again, needs confirmation, but it's a positive sign. And of course, uh, we are, well, I am personally excited to see the long-term results of the EAST trial, which will yeah. tell us the prognostic mm -hmm. benefit, the potential prognostic yeah, benefit we're all, we're all of yes. uh, uh -huh. rhythm control therapy. I think it's one more piece in the puzzle that rhythm control therapy, we've seen Castle AF, yeah. may actually help patients, not only in terms of symptoms, but also in terms of quality of life and objectively measured things like cognitive function. Great. Thanks, Paulus. I think that's a practice-changing trial.